Spirits, how are you doing second service? Don't play games. We're ready to go today. I am so excited to see you all in church. You are looking good. We're coming off of our four-week At The Movies series. Let me, let me hear it if you enjoyed At The Movies. If you didn't enjoy it, well, then you're ready to be having a great new series today. But I'm already pumped for At The Movies 2019. Like, I'm already, I don't even watch movies. I'm just pumped for At The Movies. That's all I like. I just watch them to preach about them, and then it's going to be amazing. And so I think that's going to become an, annual, an annualized thing. Glory to God. This is what a great, great series. We have more people give their lives to Christ in our At The Movie series than anything we've ever done as a church. Come on, can we give God some praise in church this morning? Somebody I invited to church made a faith decision in the first service. You might be here and you're like brand new to church and you're like, what's a faith decision? Come on, it's just like, it's just giving your life to Jesus. And I pray that anyone in, in the room this morning, regardless of how you came into the room this morning, regardless of where you're at with God, that in these next few minutes as we go to God's word together, that you just open your heart to hear from God, regardless of whether you came in uh, feeling like you're an atheist or feeling like you're kicking the tires on church, or you've been to church your whole life. Come on, this is not just another Sunday. Let's believe for God to speak to our hearts in this place. So this is a brand new message series. I want to let you know as well, in four weeks, we're going to be kicking into our Christmas series and on uh, we got three Christmas services particularly uh, between December 23rd and 24th and I just let you know that now so that you can be thinking about who you're going to invite to church because that is really your next great invite opportunity is our Christmas services and we're excited about that but we're also excited about this new series called Heart for the House. Heart for the House, this series is about making the difference. We say these things about our church. I actually just got done speaking at Next Steps raced over here, Pastor Troy, we, we tagged off, it was like tag team, and so I talked about these things at Next Steps, we say these four things uh, are what we do as a church, we believe that you, we want people to know God, a four-step spiritual journey that God has always had for every one of us, number one is always to know God, that's the first step, is a relationship with God, step number two is find freedom, because God can forgive you of your past, but he's also got to get you free from that past and lead you into a new life. And then step number three is to discover purpose. Once you get free, you've got to discover that God has a restored purpose for your life. And then step number four, which is what this series is all about, is to, is to make a difference. That place where we actually begin to use our life to make a difference for somebody else. And that's what this series is all about, is that your life matters and you can make a difference. And so... I want to let you know today that in three weeks, on the last week of the series, Sunday, December 2nd, we are having our Heart for the House miracle offering. It's once a year. Only one time a year do we come to our church and say, come on, let's, let's give sacrificially over and above our regular giving towards what God is doing. And so I'm excited to let you know that today, to get us ready for that and to begin to cast vision for what we are doing as a church and going to be doing this morning our amazing video team has put together a video. It's about eight minutes long to let, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> to let you know about the four different lanes that we feel called to run in as a church, our, our church, our city, our nation, and our world, to let you know what we are doing and what we feel called to do. And here's what I want you to do as you're watching this video, to not just to not just sit back in your seat and, and watch, but to do two things. Number one, celebrate in our hearts what God is already doing through us as a church. And number two, look forward with some faith at what God is calling us to do. Let's watch this together. I believe wholeheartedly that every person matters. The Bible says that God is building us as a house and he's building us brick by brick. And that means that every one of us is significant for somebody else. And it means that God is always focused on the one. And it means Resonate Church isn't just a collection of people, that we are God's house. Heart for the House is our once a year miracle offering where we bring something of sacrifice, believing that what we bring will enable us to reach to the one. 
In the 21 months since we launched Resonate Church, God has been constantly expanding our vision in four key lanes we believe God's called us to run in. Building our church, our community, our nation, and the world. And in this year's Heart for the House, I'm excited to share next level vision where we see God calling us in each of these four lanes he's given us to run in. Since launch last year, we've partnered with International Justice Mission in their work to eradicate cyber sex slavery in the world. The fight to eradicate slavery is a fight the church belongs in. Let's watch this. One of the commodities available in the internet is the exploitation of children. Cyber sex trafficking is a modern day form of slavery. They are able to demand the type of sexual abuse that they would want to see on camera. With $100, I can get kids that are under five years old to be abused by an older person. All the children out there victimized by this menace. We are coming to get you. One case at a time, cyber sex trafficking will come to an end. The only question is when. One investment that we believe produces never-ending returns is planting local churches. See, when we invest to plant new churches, not only are we reaching people with the love of Jesus in those cities, but those people in turn invest and give, and our investment continues on from there. This past year, we had the privilege of continuing our partnership with the Association of Related Churches, or ARC, to plant four new churches in Canada. And our investment wasn't only in dollars, but recently, because of what God's doing here at Resonate, our pastor, Pastor Shane, was invited to become a coach for ARC and coaching new church planters here in Canada. Uh, most recently in Edmonton and in Kamloops, and later on this year in Abbotsford, Windsor, and Toronto. See, these churches, what we believe is that over time are gonna give millions into missions. And so our investment continues on and on and on. I believe if Jesus were here today, he'd be present to those who are broken and he'd meet the needs of people who find themselves in a time of need. 
This year, through our partnership with local governments and community organizations, Resonate has been there in time of need. On Serve Day, partnering with Tri-Cities Friends of Refugees to do home repairs on a townhome so a refugee family could have a place to live. Doing home repairs for a single mother experiencing a season of grief and loss. And we partner every single week with the Starfish Pack program, packing backpacks of food for kids whose families need food on the weekend. And this year we are expanding our reach. For 15 days in November, we're gonna be partnered with the Cold and Wet Weather Mat program, making close to a thousand meals for the homeless over 15 days. At Resonate, we want to nurture, equip, and empower our kids and our youth to do more for the kingdom of God than they can even imagine. Everything that we build, we build with them in mind, knowing that one day the things we build will be theirs. And so this year, through our Heart for the House, we're going to be making investments into our next generation ministry environments. We're going to be building an Our Kids Room for kids whose parents serve in one service and then attend another service. We're going to be adding a live stream of our services to the Nursing Moms Room. And we're going to be upgrading all of our Our Kids and Junior High ministry environments. I'm sitting in the Molson Canadian Theatre at the Hard Rock Casino. This is the largest venue in our city. I wonder if you can imagine all the seats behind me packed for church. Because this is what we're going to do in 16 months on Easter Sunday 2020. We are going to pack the Hard Rock. Now I want you to personalize the image. I want you to imagine that you're sitting in one of these seats behind me and sitting next to you is a loved one that's far from God. The intro video is playing. It says, you are loved, you belong, God is here. And the band starts to swell into worship. And all of a sudden, that person close to you but far from God begins to experience the presence of God. I hope your heart leaps at these thoughts. That together we're going to impact thousands of people in our city. And that everything we do is not for a crowd but for the one. This year, in year number two, our Heart for the House goal is $60,000. Just under $200 for every adult that currently attends our church on a Sunday. And of course, some will be able to give far more. Some will sacrifice greatly and give much less. All that we would ever ask is that you would take a moment and ask God what He would have you do to build His house. Because this year, stories are going to be told of lives that were changed because God's given us a heart for His house. Come on, can we celebrate what God's doing through our church? God's doing. And what, what we see God doing. I mean, you know what I love about what God is doing? One of the things I love is that God is doing more than we even ask or imagine, as Ephesians chapter 3 speaks about. When we got together to plan for these four lanes of vision, and we began to plan for this video even before the summer began. What's God calling us to as a church in each of these lanes of ministry? We wanted to end this video talking about starting a second service on our second birthday. So February 24th of 2019. And that was the exciting thing that we wanted to do. But then June came along and all of a sudden we started growing faster than we had been growing before. We grew by 100 people between the middle of June and the end of July. And then we got into September, and again, God grew our church by another 60, 80 people in the month of September. And so we all of a sudden, kind of out of nowhere, started this second service on October 14th, because God was doing more than we even thought or were expecting. And so we're now looking ahead 16 months and saying, come on, we are going to pack the hard rock for Easter 2020. And as I was walking through, yeah, come on, we can praise God for that. As I was walking through that theater with Daniel, our video guy, give it up for Daniel. What a great video, by the way. Just <laughs> love you, love you, DZ. He just, amazing job. As we were walking through that theater together, I, I, are you the kind of person that I say we're going to pack the hard rock for Easter 2020 and you're like, ah, we might do it. Or are you the kind of person that's like, come on, you can see this. Like you, you just get a vision and you're like, no, this is what we are going to do. You just believe. I'm just, this is what we do. This is, how, this, is the kind of, this is what God does. He does more than we can even ask or imagine. And I'm, I'm just excited to see where God is leading us as a church. And in this series, this Heart for the House series, we're talking all about making a difference. And we saw in the, in the video the scripture that played throughout and it's from Ephesians chapter 2, actually the message 
uh, paraphrase translation, it says this. It says, God is building a home. As I said in the video, it means that this just isn't a gathering. This is family. And, and we don't just try and work ourselves up to that. Like, oh, I'm going to love these people really like them, or maybe the way you think about your family, I'm going to have to get over some of their flaws so I can really like them. That's something God does in our hearts more than something we do. God reorients our thinking when we come into this place together that, that, that this is not just a building that we rent. This is not just a collection of people that are gathering. This is something God is doing. It says he's using us all, irrespective of how we got here and what he's building. So it doesn't matter whether you came in today as a skeptic, whether you've been going to church your whole life. <coughs> doesn't matter if you came in here today just to give God one more shot to prove to you that he was real. No matter how you got here today, God's eye is on you and he wants to use you in what he's doing in the earth with Christ Jesus as the cornerstone that holds all the parts together. So understand, unless we're being held together by Jesus, it, God cannot build us brick by brick. The reason God can build us up and that you matter for one another is that God's actually done something in our lives. He's begun to heal us and set us free. And because he holds my life together, I can be used to be built on by God. We see it taking shape day after day. And so this Heart for the House series, I'm praying, I believe for some of you, there's going to be a mindset shift that happens in this series. You're going to go from seeing church as you're going to go from having a consumer mentality when you come into church, like I'm here to get some reprieve from my week, to having a mission mentality that I'm here on purpose with a purpose. Now, here's why that's something I want for you, not something I want from you. Because the best way to deal with the problems in your life is not your problem minimization strategy. It's actually to have something in your life that is bigger than your problems. Let me illustrate. So two weeks ago, and I already mentioned this, I think, last week, I was away with the coaching group that I'm a part of. It's 110 church planting pastors, and we gathered together three times a year to just encourage one another and speak into one another's lives. I came home, I was like, I was like, wow, it's like full of faith. Let's go, let's go. Let's pack the hard rock next week. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> I'm full of faith. I get home. I come to the sisterhood event. And man, what an awesome event. And I just got to say, I heard this incredible story, actually. Uh, I don't want to give away too much because it's a couple in our church, and I've not asked for any permission to tell their story, so I'll say it very vaguely. But he was here for the event, and uh, they're one of the many couples in our church that are from somewhere else in the world, just kind of here for a season. And God spoke to him at the sisterhood event. Like, no, God's, we've called, he's called us here. We are here. This is where we belong. Come on, somebody says, like, all the guys are like, well, am I supposed to come to the sisterhood event? No. Like, don't show up to the sis. He was supposed to, he was served. Okay, so anyways, sisterhood, life change, and glory to God. It was so good. Then we got to Sunday. We had Sunday morning services. It was amazing. Then we went home, and we had our small group on Sunday. All those things are wonderful, but we got to the end of that weekend, and all, like, I was kind of jet-lagged, even though it's like only a three-hour time change from, from where I was in Florida to here. It was like, whatever. I was jet-lagged. And so we get to the end of the Sunday. We put the kids to bed, and we're just like, yes! We don't, like, and I love, again, this is family. I love y'all, but I was like, I don't want to see a human being for like three days. Just like, Give the kids gravel and see you in three days. That's where I was at. It's tired. <laughs> then we found a bug in Avia's bed. And you might have seen on social media, I don't know if you're, if you're one of the social media peoples, uh, I had more comments on some posts I did a couple days ago than anything I've ever done before because I was, I was showing our house that we had ripped up all of our carpet and, uh, and that uh, all of our clothes were in bags. And people were like, it just messaging me, is it bed bugs? Thank you, Jesus, it was not bed bugs. They're like, was well, it lice? No, it wasn't lice. It wasn't either of those things. It wasn't good, but it wasn't those things. And <clears throat> so you're saying, what was it? Okay, we got this little thing, put it under a little microscope. Actually, we don't own a microscope, but we put it in some glass and we look closely at it. Um, but you know what I'm saying? It's like a figure. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm not lying, right? Like, you, you, no, so, okay, so I'm looking at this thing. We do an internet search. We're like, what is this thing? It was a carpet beetle. How many have heard of a carpet beetle before? I knew Keith Brady. I knew you would have heard of a carpet beetle. That's the only person I saw. I, I was looking at you because I expected it. Good on you. Come on. So carpet beetle. If you've never heard of a carpet beetle before, come on, we should just go back into worship right now. You should praise God that you've never heard of the carpet beetle before. This thing is a messed up creature. This says on the internet that they can, they can, 
The women, you're like, this, you're not going to like that. It's like they can have between 90 and 150 babies in like 10 days' time. How messed up is that? What kind of demonic insect are we dealing with in our house? And so we're seeing like one in the bed and then there's some in the carpet next to it. Uh, I, 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 here's what, like some of you are already like, why am I sitting so close to this guy? You're like, Chantel's in the front row, like I'm sitting next. We are free from the carpet beetle, y'all. Thank you, Jesus. The carpet beetle's gone. But for seven days, out of a place of sheer exhaustion, we did nothing but wrap clothes and wash clothes and just, uh, like just dust and vacuum and have people come over that love us and dust and vacuum. Just like every piece of fabric in our house because they eat fabric. If, who eats fabric? Dust. This is a messed up creature. Anyways, this is a, the devil is real. Uh, Here's why I tell that story. For every one of us in this room today, there is something in your life that is trying to mess you up. It could be that family issue. It could be your finances. It could be your job. And it is the biggest thing in your world right now. And yes, we're going to pray, and our prayer team will be over here after the service. God bless you, ladies. going to be praying for people after the service. And we're going to believe with you for healing and for breakthrough and deliverance. And God does those things. Thank you, Jesus. We heal reports every week. Can I tell you, in addition to that, that what I have discovered to be the secret to life that is thriving is not your problem minimization strategy. It's having something in your life that is bigger than your problems. And that's why we are pressing into this series on having a heart <coughs> for the house, is to live beyond ourselves. And this is not just something that like that I think is a good idea for you. This is what the Bible says. I'm not trying to hype you up so we get more people involved in church. This is what the Bible says is important for your life. Watch this. It says, good will come to him who is generous and lends freely. So I'm not going to hold on to everything I have. I'm going to be generous. I'm going to give beyond myself. And secondly, what, what's going to happen after that? Who conducts his affairs with justice. So I'm not just going to give beyond myself. I'm going to live beyond myself, my conduct and the way I live my life. So why does it matter that we give beyond ourselves and live beyond ourselves? This is heart for the house, giving beyond ourselves and living beyond ourselves. Why does it matter? Watch the two outcomes that come out of this kind of life. Verse six, surely he or she will never be shaken. I'm not saying that the world around you is going to stop shaking. It won't. I'm just saying it's going to stop shaking you. The world around you will not stop shaking. It will continue to shake as vigorously as it was before, and you will, in many cases, still have, this, like, you might get carpet beetles. No, you're never going to get carpet beetles. But if it happened, listen, you've got something in your life that is bigger than your problems. And when the world around you is shaking, it just will not shake you. This is why this Heart for the House series matters and it is not something that we just want from you it's something we want for you and trust me I pray hard as we go into this kind of series I love the series where I don't like honestly I just love the ones where I'm preaching God's grace and mercy and I just like that's, that's I, I love that I find it difficult to, to stand up and say come on God wants you to give big and live big because I understand I've worked in business you know I got kids I understand that your world is shaking and I understand that it's not easy. But I also know that the key to this life is not trying to eliminate the problems in those arenas. It's living a life that's bigger than the problems in those arenas. First outcome is they'll never be shaken. But the second one is a righteous man, righteous woman, never be forgotten. What that means is God is going to literally write down all of the things you do to build up others in this life, and he's going to remember them forever. And so my job as, as pastor, as your pastor, biblical image says that I'm a shepherd, so I got a responsibility to help lead you through this life. But how many know this life is such a small portion of your life? So I've got a responsibility to not just help lead you through this life, but to get you ready for the life that is to come. Building a heart for the house is not just building God's kingdom for the next 40 years and the things we're going to see God do in our church. No, we are building for eternity. In Hebrews chapter 11, 
Bible talks about great men and women of faith. This is the, the passage that's going to talk about the, the great faith exploits of Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Moses, that whole gang. It tells all the things they did individually, and it says that there's just a couple things that they had in common. Obviously, number one was great faith. But watch this. There's another commonality in verse 13. It says that they all died in faith, not having received the things promised, but having seen them and greeted them from afar. But what else did they do? All of them together, all these people that did such great things for God, what was their mindset like? It says that they acknowledged that they were strangers and exiles on the earth. I believe if, we need, if we're going to do great things for God, it's just this heart that says, this is not it. There's more to life than this. Ecclesiastes says that, that uh, God has put eternity into man's heart. It means that you could be here this morning as an atheist, and you still think about the afterlife. Why is that? It's because you know every good thing you could ever have in this life is never going to totally fill the void that you have in your life. That's because God has wired more than this life into your life. So if I've got that responsibility to get you ready to stand before God, how do we do that? This morning, as we close out this first part of the series, throughout the series, trust me, we are going to get practical on how we give beyond ourselves and live beyond ourselves. It's going to be incredible. But this morning, I just want to reorient our thinking to thinking eternal, because the only way to actually begin to take that leap of faith and give beyond yourself and live beyond yourself is to have an eternal perspective. So how do we have an eternal perspective? I want to talk about, we're all going to stand before God. Romans 14.10 says it this way, we're all going to stand before the judgment seat of God. What's that going to look like? I'm going to help you this morning. For those of you that like the theological little parts of message, this part is for you, that there's going to be two judgments. Two judgments before God. The Bible speaks of them, actually names them differently. Two judgments. And that word judgment kind of freaks people out. A judgment, that sounds so harsh. And yes, it can be. There can be a judgment against you. You can be found guilty of something. How many know that judgment can also be an incredible thing? If you're before a jury and they award you a judgment of $100 million because you just got wronged. Hello, I'll sign up for that judgment any day. So a judgment can, yes, be a bad thing, but how many know God, we serve a God, God wants you, God wants you to know the answers to this test in advance so that you can ace the test and receive an incredible judgment, God's blessing and God's favor. God wants you to know the answers to these tests. That's like, and when I was starting out, I started my career in music and and I wanted to try and get that first big gig. So I wasn't just playing like tiny little cafes in Kitchener, Waterloo, Ontario. And I was trying to, you know, make it as a musician. And I got a phone call one day from a friend who was like, man, I'm going to get you a job on cruise ships. I give you the number of the guy that you've got to call to get a job, like the direct line. And that's not the way people, at least then, got jobs working as a musician on a cruise ship. You had to get an agent and then apply and audition through the agent and they ranked you as to where you fit and then they'd send that off and someone would eventually call you. Uh, my friend's like, no, I'm just going to give you the direct line of the guy that actually does the hiring. And here's the thing. He didn't just give me the direct line. He said, here's exactly what he's going to ask you to do to audition on the phone. I didn't just have the direct line. I had the answers to the test. I knew how to ace the test. And that's like the God that you serve. Come on, he wants to give you the answers to the test in advance. He wants you to see what are the questions he's going to ask you. It's a two-question test that he's going to ask you. How do you ace the test? So here's the first question, the first judgment. And again, I don't know what God's going to say. I don't know his exact words, but we're going to see from Scripture the uh, essential elements of the two questions God's going to ask you. The first question is going to be this. What did you do with Jesus? What did you do with my son Jesus? The Bible speaks about this judgment in Revelation chapter 20. <coughs> this one's called the Great White Throne Judgment. You don't have to remember that for the test. The Great White Throne Judgment. And the Bible says this. Look at the, imagine the imagery. Verse 12 says, and then the books get opened, but then another book gets opened, and that's the book of life. And the dead are judged by what's written in the books. What is written in the books? What's written down there? What they had done. So I want you to picture with me. Over here is the books. You stand before God. It's like when you go to the doctor and, and the assistant pulls your file, except they pull like the books. And the angels bring them out and they're like, here's the full list of everything Shane Johnston has ever done. And it's all the good and the bad and the ugly. 
It's like, here's every hug that Shane ever gave to someone who was feeling lonely. And, you know, it's like 2018. And so maybe it's like, you know, hug, what's that? I send emojis. You know, so whatever you do to make people feel good, you know, that's all written there in the books. But then also the other stuff too, right? Like just the, the pride and the greed and the bad attitudes and the things I said about other people. Like that's, it's all there. It's not my, don't take my word from it. It's, 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 it's in the book. But then there's another book that's open. Picture it over here. It's called the book of life. The Bible says only one thing gets written in that book. That's when you put your faith in Jesus. God just writes your name in that book. Here's how I like to picture the transaction, the miracle. When you put your faith in Jesus Christ, God says, all these books, push on those that way. They come over here. I'm going to look in this book. It's not what you've done, what you haven't done. It's just your name. The first judgment is a grace judgment. You can't go to church enough. You can't pray enough. You can't read your Bible enough. You can't serve enough. You can't hug enough. You can't love enough. You can't do enough of anything. It's all on the basis of what God has done for you through his son, Jesus Christ. It's a grace judgment. It's a great white throne. It's the heaven-hell decision, and it's not on the basis of what we've done. It's your name on the basis of faith. That's the first judgment. God's given you the answer to the question in advance. But there is a second question. God's going to ask you. We find this judgment spoken of in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, <coughs> as well as 1 Corinthians chapter 3, but we'll read from 2 Corinthians 5. It says, we must all appear before, this one's named, the judgment seat of Christ, so that each one may receive what is due for what he's done in the body, whether good or evil. And so if that first judgment was a grace judgment, you couldn't do anything to earn it. The second judgment is a works judgment. Here's how I picture God asking the question. Once you knew how much I loved you and that I pushed all of that stuff out of the way and I just wrote down your name. Once you knew that I loved you that much, did you make a difference? Did you let me pick you up? Christ Jesus as the cornerstone and lay you down as a brick in what I was building in the earth. I wrestle honestly as a pastor to, to bring these types of messages to you. I've been, I've been talking to God about it a lot this week. That I don't want you to think that heart for the house, give big, live big. It's something we're saying to you because we need you in Rock Falls Church. We don't want to guilt you into things. That's why we show you that video in week one. And don't ask for an offering right after it. Come on, you, you saw what is going on in our world. Like you, we could manipulate into give big, live. That's not what we do. we do is, is we enter into a place where we see what God did in that first judgment, where he kicked the books aside and wrote your name down. We said, God, in response to that, I want to give big and I want to live big. And so I pray that over these next four weeks, as we journey through this series together, that you'd simply open up your heart. Now, maybe you're here. You've been through a season that was exhausting. Maybe in another church. Maybe you came in full of hurt from someplace, hurt in your life, hurt from some, maybe hurt from a church you were a part of. You're like, I kind of just, I kind of just feel like I need some healing. Can I tell you this morning, that's okay. You are welcome to sit in services, just receive from the love of God. Can I challenge you in that place? Open your heart as wide as you can to get healed by God so that you can get back in the game. So that you
you get so healed and so set free that you don't need to stay in that place forever. But you're like, okay, yeah, I've been here a while. I'm going next steps. I'm, I'm diving in. I'm going to get on. I'm, I'm just I'm, what, serving at the homeless shelter this week. Sign. I'm in. Why? Because I, I needed a season where God healed me up. But when I was in that season, I opened up fully and God healed me. God, thank you for your presence in this place. Thank you, Jesus, that that first judgment is by grace alone. Thank you, God, that you want to bless us and you call us to make a difference so that we can live life bigger than our problems. And I pray, God, in these next few moments as we respond back into worship, just begin to shift our hearts and our minds and our understanding of what you've called us to. I'm going to invite you all over the room to stand with us as we return into worship. God, I pray that you would, by your Holy Spirit, speak to our hearts, God, how we can give beyond ourselves and live beyond ourselves, starting in this place today with renewing our minds as to what matters in this life. In Jesus' name. Bow down before invite you to keep your eyes closed and heads bowed for a moment because maybe you're in the room this morning when it comes to that first judgment you don't know where you stand you are ability to answer that question with what did I do with Jesus you don't know that if today you were to stand before God you don't know what your answer would be to that today I want to invite you to a place of surrendering your life to Christ This is not something you can do. It's something God does for you. And so what I'm going to ask you to do in just a moment is if that's you and you're going to make that decision today to surrender your life to Christ, I'm going to invite you to raise your hand and say, yeah, Pastor Shane, that's me. I'm making that decision today. What's that going to look like? We're not going to center you out or embarrass you. We're simply going to pray a prayer of faith. You can do nothing to earn it. God gives it by his grace. In fact, he's already done the work. You 
just need to believe today and receive what God has done for you. So if today you're making that either a first time decision to surrender your life to Jesus Christ, or you're recommitting your life to Christ knowing that at some point you walked away from God and today you're saying, I need, I need to return back to God today. Would you just raise your hand on the count of three? I'm gonna pray for you in just a moment. Come on, just believe it. This is your moment of decision. One, two, three. Would you just shoot your hand up? Hold it up. It's between you and God. Yeah. Yeah. Amazing. Amazing. <laughs> let's pray together. Maybe you raised your hand or you didn't, but you wanted to. Come on, church. Let's help those who, who raised their hands today and are praying this. Let's say this together. Say, dear Jesus, give you all of my life, and I choose to follow you. I believe that you died and you rose again so I could be forgiven. My name could be written down and by grace, I receive eternal life in Jesus' name. Help me to live for you. Put you number one in my life. In Jesus' name, amen. Come on, church, can we throw down some thunderous applause for those who made that decision? Oh, come on, for real. Death to life. Nothing better. Nothing better.